interrupt the talk to bring you an update on breaking news in Orlando. Right now, police are getting ready to give us an update on the search for the man accused of shooting and killing an employee at the Orlando Premium Outlets Monday night. News 6's Eric Sandoval is live at the Orlando Police Department with an update. Eric. Yeah, of course, we're talking about 46-year-old Daniel Everett, guys. Uh, this has been this, he's been the subject of a statewide search ever since an incident that happened on Monday at the uh, International Premium Outlets, more, more uh, specifically the Under Armour store here in Orlando. Orlando police just released some pictures earlier today. We want to show you those right now. It basically shows the suspect, Everett, as he walks through that Under Armour store on Monday evening and pulls out a handgun. Uh, as we've uh, been reporting since Monday, he fatally shot manager Eunice Vasquez in front of customers there. Uh, photos show him wearing uh, uh, it, it, uh, all black and white sneakers in front of a gray Kia Sorento. Um, you know, he was last seen in St. Lucie County. That is all the way down in the Fort Pierce area, uh, evidently 945 on Monday evening. Investigators are telling us that he apparently sent an email to former co-workers blaming them for his firing. Now, ever since this happened on Monday evening, the alert has been going out from Orlando police that he is armed and dangerous. They have warned people that if they see him to call 911 immediately. Again, uh, just moments away from a news conference, I, I see uh, investigators and uh, possibly the police chief walking into the room right now uh, getting together. Uh, we're expecting some kind of announcement involving the search for Daniel Everett uh, in just moments. Back to you. And Eric, this guy, a lot of people have been wondering how he hasn't been found yet because he stands out, literally. He, this is a, a very big man, right? He, yeah, he, he is. And, you know, the, the picture has gone out all over the uh, state. And uh, actually, the uh, police chief is just about to walk up on stage. So I want to step out of the, out of the uh, frame here. Again, uh, an announcement involving the uh, search for Daniel Everett, the key suspect in a fatal shooting at the Under Armour store at the International Premium Outlets in Orlando. Let's listen into the chief now. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just want to give you an update. The vehicle has been located in Fort Pierce. A uh, person inside the vehicle has been found deceased. We believe it is uh, the suspect in this case. But I also want to highlight the fact that when it comes to these uh, investigations, of course, there are tragedies. Um, a lot of people are affected. But also, even with those involved in inflicting harm to others, there are mothers, uh, wives, daughters that are affected also. So our condolences go out to the family members who have, who everyone who has been affected by this tragedy. Um, our investigative team did an amazing job making sure that we got all of our resources uh, working together with our partners to try to figure out where the vehicle was, where the suspect was. And it took us to the Fort Pierce area. That's where the majority of our concentration was. The U.S. Marshal's Office, uh, along with our partners over there, made it very, very uh, clear that we needed to have all hands on deck, our resources, our, our uh, fugitive unit actually traveled back and forth every night from the Fort Pierce area. But a jogger who happened to be uh, walking by where the vehicle was located uh, spotted the vehicle, spotted something suspicious, and called the Fort Pierce Police Department. The Fort Pierce Police Department is now conducting, conducting a death investigation based on the body that was found inside the car. Uh, Under Armour has been absolutely uh, amazing when it comes to the support they have provided to us, making sure that all the information that we needed as far as employees and the safety of the employees, that was their number one priority, so kudos to them. Uh, premium outlets, uh, the security team there also has made it uh, very, very, uh, they made themselves available to us for everything and anything that we did during this investigation. Um, the employees, of course, the stores, uh, many of them in the Central Florida region were closed for a while. That was a corporate decision. We uh, believe that those stores will be opening soon. So at this point, we're very confident that um, the person we were looking for has been located. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, it had to end this way, but want to give thanks to you also, the media that made it uh, possible for us to share information and push that information out with our citizens. Um, with that, if you have any questions, we'll answer them now. So, Chief, this jogger, uh, when did you find out that the jogger found the vehicle and what happened? 
So, Teresa. Uh, so we were notified uh, within the last, I would say, 90 minutes or so um, that they believed that they had the vehicle. The vehicle was locked. Uh, I spoke personally with the detective on scene, and we were able to confirm just by um, exchanging information that it was Mr. Everett. Um, and then our initial or immediate priority was to get to his wife and daughter. Um, yes, um, Detective Eason and I just met with them uh, not long ago and um, notified them in person. And obviously we wanted this to end without further loss of life. The goal was always um, to bring Mr. Everett in um, into custody safely. Um, we uh, feel terrible for his family and um, they are shattered. Uh, there are no uh, no families here. Every, all these families are affected. Um, there are no winners here. So this is tragic uh, for everyone involved, for everyone who was there that night, for all the employees that were on the list, um, and um, for Mr. Everett's family. Uh, it's a tragic end for everyone. Do you Go ahead. Uh, we believe there. Uh, we're not exactly sure, but um, it does appear that he's been there for several days. And just to clarify, it sounds it's like possible. he... It's possible. It's possible. Uh, the medical examiner hopefully will be able to answer that. Um, but it, it, it does appear that, that he has been in that area, at least and since Monday around 9.46 p.m., which we released to you earlier. And it's, it's possible that um, not long after that, that he may have ended his own life. The fact that they had, like, different pictures with different clothes, what does that mean? That he changed his clothes? Yes, ma'am. Between the morning and the evening. Yes, ma'am. That's from the morning, that was when he was terminated, and then the evening uh, pictures are from when he was inside the store during the shooting. Was that a picture of the house inside? Yes, ma'am. So that was immediately before Depending on which picture, one was before, one was after. We had reason to believe that he had intentions to harm others. As a matter of fact, there was another employee inside of the store that when he killed the first victim, we believe he looked for that employee knowing that the employee was supposed to or was scheduled to be inside of the store. What we have learned uh, during this investigative process was that the employee was at an extended lunch break, therefore was not where they were supposed to be when he came in. So the list that later on we became aware of, that employee was listed. He actually walked by some other employees uh, during this incident. So it was very critical, very important for us to locate him as soon as possible um, because of the fear that maybe there could be further action. Was that the employee who alleged that he hit her? No. I'm not aware of that, so no. Um, speaking with the investigator, obviously the lead investigator a little while ago, um, he, he, he did certain things while he was in that store. He had knowledge of how the process works in the store and where the employees should be during that process. And we believe he, he made it a point to go where that employee should have been at that particular time when he was inside the store. The fact that the employee was also listed on the list uh, was a, of great concern. No, not we don't. Right, not right now. Uh, and that's part of our investigation with Fort Pierce and what led him there. And that's one of the, um, the questions we have as well is why that area. And we'll work with um, his family and friends and try and determine if that's uh, what happened. And the employee um, who was, um, uh, we think, uh, he was looking for was, was out in the mall um, and uh, on, her, on her dinner break. Um, and that was the, probably the only reason that um, she wasn't able to be targeted. I think probably just that day during termination. Termination was in the morning, and it looked like it, 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 it weighed on him pretty heavily during the day, and the decision and the plan was formulated during the day at some point. No, uh, the email was sent out at 8.01 p.m. And this shoot, we got the call for the shooting at 8.07. We believe he entered the store around 8.02, 8.03. So no one had read the email before the shooting occurred. No other prior signs of, of threats or of violence? 
nothing, nothing. Um, you know, the, the um, termination was even a surprise to the people on the list. Um, they did not know he was going to be terminated that morning. Nothing. His, um, his wife's been with him 20 years. Um, she is devastated. It, it just, this is so removed from his character and everyone that we've spoken to that knows him has said that as well. Um, she's shattered, as is his daughter. Is there any takeaway from this? Chief, you want to speak on that? <laughs> You know, it, it goes to show how unpredictable situations can sometimes be. Here you have a, an individual who, by all accounts, there is no, not even the remote sign of something like this ever happening. Um, sometimes um, life has brings surprises, and, and this is one of those that I think since he has now passed, we will all be wondering what triggered it? What, what made this individual do this that affected so many? The victim that died as a result of his actions and now his family suffering the consequences of his actions. It's a, it's a very tragic situation and just like Detective Sprague mentioned, it's, a, it's not a win-win you know, for anyone. It's a loss for everyone. You know um, I'm sorry, it, it, but before I finish, you know, obviously locally, Orange County, Osceola Sheriff's Office, Kissimmee PD, St. Cloud, the U.S. Marshal's Office, Fort Pierce PD now helping us with the investigation, um, St. Lucie County uh, Sheriff's Office, Okoye. There's so many agencies, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but the men and women of the Orlando Police Department, our fugitive unit, our detectives, our sergeant for our detective unit, everyone, uh, a, lot of, a lot of hours into this case, very, very little sleep in the process, um, an awesome job by everyone who assisted during this process. Thank you. Okay. I don't know if anyone has said it. I was just wanting to know exactly where the car was. Was it like in a parking lot? Like so we're going to allow the St. Lucie County, I'm sorry, St. Uh, Fort Pierce PD, they're, they're dealing with the uh, death investigation. They're going to put out a media release uh, with those details, uh, and I'm sure that they'll disclose exactly where that car was. Right. What did the Vasquez family have to say? I'm sure they're devastated. I'm sure, but I'm sure that they're also, in one way, in a, in a way, they're probably somewhat more at ease now, knowing that we have found uh, some closure to the, the investigative process, trying to locate them. But this is going to haunt them for for a very long time. So. Just a few minutes ago, it was our, it's one of our priorities whenever we have a situation like this, that everyone that we can reach is notified before we put the information out. And uh, we were just doing that. Just, uh, and unfortunately, the number that we had um, somehow or another now is not working. It's not connecting. But um, we were hoping to connect with her before the press conference took place. Thank you very much, everybody. Real quick. No, I didn't say that. No, so. no, and, and we'll we'll get you the exact time. I believe it was eight oh one p.m. Okay. All right. I I can't. It looked like it might have been since we got the afternoon. Um. No, it was. I. He may have sent it to his cell phone. Yeah, I mean, maybe sent it to his uh, his own email. Okay. Yeah, and then forward it to everyone at eight oh one. Mm-hmm. So, and we'll get you. The chief will get you an exact uh, time on that. Again, thank you very much. Very somber press conference there from Orlando police as uh, the end of a manhunt takes place. Daniel Everett's body found inside his car in Fort Pierce. One of the more shocking revelations yeah. we heard in there is that he may have gone into that store to not just shoot the victim, Eunice Maria Vasquez, but also may have had someone else he was looking for. That person on an extended lunch break, so they did mm -hmm. not have that encounter. Yeah, one of the detectives there saying this is a tragic end for everyone involved in this, that that his wife just shattered. His wife's been with him for 20 years, and that everyone that they talked to during this investigation saying this was so out of character for Daniel Everett. We'll continue to follow this story right here and on ClickOrlando.com.